Who want a ticket straight to them pearly gates? Mr. Blade, first black superhero, right? Blade? You knew that. Okay. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Raven and Master Raven. Now, I think th these two characters, it's very interesting. And me personally, I am really excited to see what happens in the future. Tekken 8 is the main uh, focus for this video. And I think it's, it's, I don't want to get ahead of the video. Let's start at the beginning. So you guys know how this works. I ask you guys, which character do you want me to cover in the next video? Um, whichever comment has the most likes, I will talk about that character next. In the last video where I was talking about Steve Fox, the two top characters was Ling Xiao Yu and Master Raven. Both of these has three likes. I was going to flip a coin, heads or tails, but I decided to do Raven because I feel like Raven right now is way more exciting to talk about just for the possibilities of the future, right? So I'm going to start this video off with talking about Raven in Tekken 5, 6, and then talking about Master Raven in Tekken 8. Or actually, before we get to that, before we get to that, what I think is really fascinating about Raven is how Raven is kind of a clone of Blade. Now, Blade is a very iconic Marvel comic book character. I'm the first, I'm the first hero everybody knew. Marvel didn't have no black fan bases before me. So Marvel had no black fans before Not me. one. Not one. Not one fan. Name them. Everyone knows who Blade is, and I think that is why Master Raven was designed after him. They haven't said that concretely, but it's very obvious. And if even if we look at the movies for Blade, we can see the first movie came out in 1998, the second one 2002, the third one Blade Trinity 2004. Now the reason why this is so important is because Tekken 5, which is where Raven showed up, that came out in 2005. In arcades, it came out in 2004. So you can see that Raven really is like, was, was piggybacking off of Blade's uh, success. And the reason why I say all that is because, for those of you who don't know, there is a new Blade movie uh, in the works. Um, it's supposed to come out in like two, three, four years, something like that. And really, that movie could release the same time as Tekken 8 is releasing almost the same year or a year after it's really close these two things uh, can be and if you consider that Raven is a copy of Blade there is a new Blade movie coming Tekken 8 will release the same time around there it only makes sense for them to have Raven show up again now I'm going to talk about the story now and I'm going to sort of talk about the details of why I think Raven may be the one to show up in Tekken 8 and Master Raven may sit this one out. Um, even though I, I think it is uh, sad either way because Master Raven has grown a lot in Tekken 7 and, has, and really has a big fan base. So either one you pick, whether it's Raven or Master Raven, I think there will be some sadness and some heartbreak there because both of these characters uh, have grown a lot. I just think when it comes to Tekken 8, the new Blade movie is coming it's more profitable to probably have Raven in there, right? But let's talk about Tekken 5. So, of course, Raven and Master Raven, they both work with United Nations. They're sort of like uh, special forces or something like that. And they sort of work with Lars uh, Alexander and, you know, stuff like that. Um, one thing that I found out, they dislike Sergei Dragunov and they dislike Yoshimitsu. I thought they were cool with Yoshimitsu. But I guess I was sort of misunderstanding or I misunderstood something like that. And they they don't like Yoshi. And it's funny because Yoshimitsu is a good person and they're also good. But I, I guess why they may not like Yoshimitsu is because when it boils down to it, Yoshimitsu is a thief. He steals from the rich and gives to the poor. So these two... Um, Raven and Master Raven being officials, they may not like him stealing at all. I don't know how deep they're, Let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the story and let's see if Yoshimitsu pops up. 
So, starting with Tekken 5, this is Raven's story. Raven is known as one of the most skilled and ruthless agents. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Raven is known as one of the most skilled and ruthless agents in a certain government intelligence agency. That first sentence there doesn't make sense. The main reason Raven wasn't in Tekken 7 is because he needed training. Master Raven said it herself. This is the guy that gave Raven all that trouble? That imbecile needs to be trained. Raven is not good enough at his job, therefore he needs to go back into training. But if he is one of the most skilled and ruthless agents, how is he not good enough? Your whole group must be filled with scrubs if the best one isn't good enough. I think maybe that's a retcon. Who knows? Maybe it's a retcon. But we're just starting off with this Raven story and I just, I just can't believe it. Let's continue though. While on a mission to investigate connections between the Mishima Zaibatsu and G Corporation, he witnessed Heiachi Mishima being assaulted by a deployment of Jack and the explosion that ensued when the Jack self-destructed. Afterwards, news reached Raven that the King of the Artifice Tournament 5 would be held. Raven decided to enter in order to gather intel about the tournament and the motives of those behind it. It says, after infiltrating the King of the Artifice Tournament 5, Raven found Heiachi, who many believed was dead, and engaged him in combat. Before the fight ended, Raven was ordered back to headquarters. I wonder what made him start fighting Heiachi. He infiltrated the tournament to see if anything was going wrong, but then all of a sudden he just starts trying to beat up Heiachi. But then he's sort of called off. I'm guessing Master Raven, who his, is his higher up, called him back and said retreat right it goes on to say as the world was trying to recover from the devious work of the Mishima Zaibatsu the conflict between that organ organization and G Corporation escalated it appeared to be only a matter of time before this discord turned into a large-scale encounter Raven infiltrated the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 6 in order to stop further carnage so now we have the scenario campaign from Tekken 6 and it says Raven acts as a spy throughout the story aiding Lars Alexander by silently observing him and passing information to Yidrazo and Lars second in command Togu. Raven gets involved personally when Lars and Elisa Boskanovich are confronted by the Mishima Zaibatsu robots. Raven defeats Nancy and meets up with Lars only to find him grieving by the loss of Elisa who has been turned against him by Jen Kazama. Raven then accompanies Lars to the Middle East where they help Zafina and then using the information she provides to locate the Temple of Azel. Lars, Alyssa, and Raven, they show up, they fight Azel. I, I guess they kind of kill him, but really only the only person who can really kill Azel is someone who holds the devil gene. So he gets back up, he comes back from the dead, is then Jin shows up. Jin shows up and you know Superman punches them, they fall into the hole and they both die. Um, so it seems at that point in time. But Raven is sort of uh, I guess taking Alyssa to be fixed or to be repaired and as he's leaving he's talking to Lars saying I wonder if Jin really wanted it to end this way because Jin was pulling all the strings. He was the one who created madness to resurrect Azel, and then he ends up sacrificing himself to save everyone and defeat Azel. So you kind of just wonder, you know, was that his plan or is that just how things sort of happened, right? That's kind of what Lars and Raven is talking about. Now, after Jin sacrifices himself to finally defeat Azel, Raven and his UN forces find Jin's body out in the desert. The devil Jean marks is still on his shoulder. Raven orders his soldiers to recover the body and take it with them. From the, the looks of it, it looks like he comes back maybe to search because this is the thing. He is the one who finds Jen's body. If Lars and Alyssa was there with him, they I don't think they would have let him take the body. I think Lars would have tried to take it himself. So this is what makes me think that Lars left 
and Raven may have stayed behind or they left together then Raven came back I don't know it just these kind of details really doesn't matter but it's just sort of makes me think about how these things actually played out but after this they strap Jin into this bed in a helicopter and they're flying away now this helicopter eventually blows up Jin shoots a laser and blows it up but the thing about this Raven is not in this helicopter at the same time he loads up Jin's body once again Master Raven calls him and says come back you know you got to do some uh, training you're not strong enough right he's he's strong enough to beat Azale but he's not strong enough to beat Dragonoff this is the guy that gave Raven all that trouble that imbecile needs to be trained really I think this is just a poor excuse to replace Raven with a female version of the character uh, because you know he's he's proven himself defeated Azale um, he's one of the best in their clan I think the dads really just came up with a bad excuse to, to get Raven out of the picture now this is where R Master Raven shows up and really her story is kind of undercooked and that's why I think Raven will make a return to Tekken 8. But let's look at Tekken 7. Now we're switching over to Master Raven. Raven has been pulled off the combat field and now he's, you know, taking classes. He's training to become stronger. And in the meantime, Master Raven is filling in for him. It says, attached to United Nations Secret Intelligence Service, she is codenamed Master Raven. She is a high-ranked official with plenty of subordinates, taxed in various dangerous missions. With Heiachi Mishima reclaiming the Mishima Zabatu and wage, waging war against G Corporation, the activities of the Secret Service have been increased to monitor the reports of what's happening in the world. Loyal to her duty, she will go to the ends of the earth for her role. And then that's kind of it. She doesn't really do anything. She doesn't really, she's not even in the story. Her character ending doesn't even have any like impact at all in the story. And this is, this is just a thing with Tekken 7 overall. No one else matters except for the Mishima Zaibatsu. Everyone else's story literally is press pause. It's pause and we're all hoping that in Tekken 8, they hit the play button, they hit resume, and we can see these stories continue. I don't understand what it was about Tekken 7 that made them decide not to pro progress anyone's character. Only the Mishima Zaibatsu got character development. I don't know why they made that dis that decision. Um, well, I guess this is, I don't wanna get too off topic, but everyone says they have had budget issues. Harada said they didn't. So if they did not have budget issues, why did they do these? Did such a poor job with the story. It's unbelievable. Now talking exclusively about Tekken 8 and the story. I know a lot of people want these characters to return for gameplay and things like that. But me personally, I don't care about gameplay. I don't care about, uh, you know, male or female. The only reason I'm so invested is because story. Master Raven, we know nothing about her. In Tekken 7, we learn nothing. All we know is that she is Raven's boss. And that doesn't really say much, you know. I really hope that Raven makes a return. And I hope the Blade movie can be fuel for them to make that decision. Because, let me tell you, I think that Blade movie is going to be tight. That Blade movie is going to be next level. And I think... They really need to capitalize off that Marvel fan base and give Raven a, a redesign, make him look more, even more like Blade and give us a real fulfilling story with this character. Okay, fine, whatever. He sat out Tekken 7. Tekken 7, he was training. Somehow he defeats Azel. Somehow he's the best in his clan, but he still needs training. So whatever, but bring him out of training, give him some new moves, give him some new abilities, really make Raven, uh, you know, a, a, I was going to say powerful character, but I don't want to say powerful. Make him a important character in Tekken 8. Make him, uh, give everyone what they're asking for, right? Master Raven is just a 
female version of Raven. Her story doesn't exist. Nothing exists about the character. And I just really hope that what they give us in Tekken 8 is better and is more than what we got in Tekken 7. Um, the fact that Master Raven isn't even in the story, it just speaks volumes, right? You at least have Raven in the story picking up Jen's body. We don't know if he was in the helicopter. I say he wasn't because if he was in there when it blown up, they would have showed it. Um, they would have, you know, he wouldn't be in training, then he would be in the hospital. I think give us Raven, give us a complete story, give us some character, uh, you know, development. And what's the deal with him beefing with Yoshimitsu? If some of you guys know what that, what the problems is there, I would love to know. But like I said at the beginning, I think the, my guess would be is that Yoshimitsu is a thief when it boils down to it. Whether he's stealing to the rich, giving to the poor, stealing is stealing. And agents of the United Nations will see him as a bad guy for doing such. I don't know if it's deeper than that. It's really hard to tell because we don't really see much here in the Tekken Wiki. But that is pretty much it. That's all I have to say about Raven, Master Raven. And that's kind of what I hope for Tekken 8. Like I said at the beginning, comment which character you want me to cover next and I will do it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.